Sometimes, all you need is more of the same. In the golden age of 3D platformers, it seemed like if you had a hit, a sequel was sure to follow. Nowadays, a sequel coming out a year after a smash hit would probably mean a dip in quality. But back in the budding 3D console era, this meant more freedom in the game's design. Developers would have to focus less on making things work on the hardware and more on their new ideas. Or so I'd like to think. I don't know about you. There are lots of great games to talk about in this time period, but I only have time for three. And with each one, a way to make a really good number two. So as Sonic says, here we go. Here are three great examples of how to do a platformer sequel. Spyro the Dragon was a great game. A beautiful first look into the cheeky world of dragons and wild monsters. Spyro's mission was to rescue all the petrified dragons. He starts out in his home world, but goes through several portals into other fantastical places. Along the way, he would grab gems, save dragon eggs, and kick Nasty Nork's butt. Spyro is about the freedom of movement. You could dash, breathe fire, and glide. And considering some of the PlayStation 1 graphics at the time, this game looks really good. Spyro alone looks like he's from the PS2, and the world is simple but very expressive at the same time. So how do you follow this up? Well, add some variety. Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage, plays nearly identical to the first game, although your objectives in each world have changed. Instead of saving dragons, you now help the citizens of the world you're in. Usually this is just running out all the bad guys, but there's also several missions in each level, often leading into a unique minigame. And no, this wasn't the one with skateboarding. There are also more secret paths, more gems, and more ways to spend them. Capitalism. Spyro could also learn some new moves. Anecdote time. As a kid, I flipped out when I hopped in water, thinking I'd drown, only to learn that Spyro can swim now. Also, for some reason, he learned how to climb ladders. They also gave us a variety of characters to interact with. Like, you know, the logical cousins of Dragon, Cutis and Fawns. You saw the professor's book. They have claws like this, teeth like this, and they spit fire like this. Poo, poo. With its additional objectives, superb level design, and new abilities, Spyro 2 was the perfect amount of new sprinkled on the already complete cupcake that was the first game. I was really hoping that metaphor was going to pan out, but uh... What? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Banjo-Kazooie is the true king of N64 platformers. Not only that, but its sequel Banjo-Tooie set an unreal expectation for good sequel names that still haunts games like Splatoon. Now, Banjo was already a potpourri of minigames, quests, and transformations. So, what could a sequel really add? Well, the answer is more. Because Tooie had larger ambitions. Brand new minigames, new moves, new transformations, and plenty of secrets. Not only that, but the worlds within the game are larger and more interconnected. The first Banjo had nicely themed areas, but for the most part, they were standalone and you could complete most of them in one run. Toodles introduced many crossover sections, and sometimes you would end up in a new zone without even knowing. Some of the collectibles and jiggies were in sight but out of reach until much later. Some objectives took the whole game to complete. This in turn changed how the whole game flows. It felt like one giant puzzle, or a jiggy. <laughs> However, this did have its fair share of problems. Because you had to return to a level multiple times, it was really easy to be lost or forget about side quests. Bigger maps meant some secrets were easily skippable, not that you needed to find them. And some new features felt like a total drag, or didn't make it in the original N64 version. But you could get gamer picks on the Xbox. The Squeakwool took some concepts from the first game and made them less important or a little bit snappier. Overall, both Banjo games give you the same sense of triumph but have a totally different feel that stand alone in their own right. Better than some Banky Kings out there. Alright, for this next game, I just gotta say. I don't think Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus wasn't good, but maybe it wasn't the game Sly Cooper wanted to be. Well, bam, boom. Slide 2, Band of Thieves. And this is the third way to do a platformer sequel. The better idea. 
Out are the linear levels, one-hit kills, and solo exploration of the first game. Sly and his friends Murray and Bentley can now freely roam around the map. They could sneak, steal, or cause havoc. And when you're ready, a range of missions are available. Much like the first game, there are separate sections that have something you need to move forward. But in Sly 2, it felt more like you were planning a heist. What am I saying? That's exactly what you were doing. Cod photos are a grim reminder of what the modern thief is up against. Spotlights, stepped up patrols, the sum of it all renders a direct assault impossible. You could send Sly in for intel, Murray to secure a route, or Bentley in his two-legged glory to hack. Which, by the way, the hacking minigames alone are fantastic. They even made a whole separate game of them. And while you were out and about, you could find valuable things to bring back to base. Now, this wasn't a reboot. It was a continuation of the story. The consequences of what you did in the first game come back in full force. But this time, it was about the honor among thieves. Wait, no, that was the third game. Anyways, it still kind of plays like the first Sly game. But the gameplay loops were modified, and a lot of great things were added. Sly Tooper is still the sharpest game in the series. It was the right amount of culling and innovation. Platformers are on the rise again. Remasters of games like Crash and Spyro are pulling from this golden age. And games like Super Mario Odyssey and A Hat in Time are refining what made the genre great in the first place. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that we wouldn't be here without Bubsy 3D.